Now, I've got a headline for you. The Soros backlash. How the nation has turned against soft on crime prosecutors. Matt Palumbo wrote that, and Matt joins me now. Tell me how, how, tell me how mm -hmm. public opinion has turned away from these radical DAs. Can, can you give me an example? Well, yeah, I mean, Chase Abudin is my favorite in San Francisco, because he uh, ended up getting ousted. Yeah, he's and out, right? To be too liberal for San Francisco is yeah. arguably an impressive feat, and it was so humiliating for George Soros that he immediately after actually tried to deny ever funding Abudin in the first place. And it was kind of like with Alvin Bragg, where the argument is, yeah, I didn't fund him. I funded a group that then funded him. Uh, but all of these DAs are in far left cities. So the fact that they're either not running for re-election or getting ousted or having these major scandals really does say a lot. And but, but why do you say that public opinion is turning against them? Well, it turns out that, you know, I, you know to, I guess, paraphrase city slickers in these cities, there's two types of politics, liberal and progressive. And the progressives are the ones who are extremely weak on crime. But the liberals, while they're obviously far to the left from us, they also don't want to be victims of crimes, so they will vote based on that. Well, do these DAs have to stand for election? They do, don't mm -hmm. they? Is it once every two years? I believe so, yes. Okay. Well, are any of them, who are still left in mm -hmm. place, are any of them going to be elected or voted out? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would actually argue, well, we've gone from 70 to, uh, sorry, 75 to 70 so far. Um, in my article, I identified nine uh, that, that are leaving to some extent, or, you know, being ousted or are going to leave. Um, and seven of them were just not going to run for re-election because I think they knew there was just no way we were going to get re-elected. In Oakland, the DA there, they call her Aunt Pam, Pamela Price. She yes. visited the jails. They love her. Everyone in Oakland, they've seen their cars get stolen, broken into. They've had enough, and they are trying to recall her. She could easily get reelected. Yeah. But well, that's very easy. Or recalled, because people are fed up. Well, the sort of silver lining is that the turnout rates in these elections is microscopic. So I, I actually had an idea. Like, there needs to be a website where there's a directory of all of these DAs and then when they're up for a re-election. And, you know, I, I think that would, maybe I should be the one to do that, I guess. Build that website. <laughs> sure. You? You do that. A top executive behind Google's woke AI chatbot is known as Gemini. Mm -hmm. That executive has come under fire for a resurfaced tweet. He, it, way back, he claimed that white privilege was a real thing, and he called on people to recognize bias. So what, Matt? Well, AI is only as good as the people programming it, and there is a lot of good applications for machine learning, but when it's something where there's opinion, it's only going to spout out answers that help the left. Like, if you ask ChatGPT to bash Biden, it usually won't. If you ask it to bash Trump, it, what a coincidence it will. Um, and we noticed this one because it wouldn't really draw white people or acknowledge them in their AI, the Google one. And I had this, I know this is a dumb thought, but... You know, people have these these conspiracy fears of AI going rogue, and I'm like, but if it doesn't notice white people, wouldn't we be the only people spared? So it's almost double racist in both directions. So, but you've done this. You've, you've asked these questions. Oh, the yeah. Chatbot. Although I did once ask it if my Soros book is worth reading, and it did say yes. So it's not entirely bad, but overwhelmingly it'll uh, take the left-wing answer. Um, how do you change <laughs> that, though? Well, I don't really, know how you change that. really, you don't, because if you look at how these big tech companies donate in pre presidential campaigns, like if they are ninety percent to Democrats, that's considered right wing in context of how these companies operate. And Twitter, I think, was ninety nine percent. I mean, I know they're not in AI, but but all of those similar companies are like that. So but the, uh, the bias is written right mm -hmm. in. Yep. It's, it's part of the data mm -hmm. that AI analyzes and spits out yeah. a, a, a liberal response. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. Well, yeah. Google is using the Reddit uh, uh, information to train sure. its models. No, but that could give you a more human or more sure. honest uh, detailing of stuff. It's a forum where people kind of write exactly what they think. Well, would we ever get to the point where you, you ask for something from a chatbot and it spits out a neutral response? Well, I think we need more conservatives in the field, but it, it's going to be sort of a Herculean task. I mean, it could take a generation before we, we see that happen. That's the very bad news that you I delivered know, it's this horrible. morning. <laughs> Matt Palumbo, thanks for delivering it anyway. Thank we you. Appreciate it. And you have a great weekend. You as well. There you go.